All right, hit it, face. Uh, good e Friday. Good, happy Friday evening. This is Casey from 1878 Casuals, brought to you by Terrace Colt and Moo Moo Mia Ice Cream. And I hear a lot of good things about this ice cream. Can't wait to go. And Terrace Colt, we know we got the fresh copper. I just love it. I love it. I got to get the all blackout one, but it's coming. Um, I'm on board here with my man, Hollywood, and my man, Sinatra. Gentlemen, and say hello to the good people out there. Bhagwan. How you guys doing? How you doing this? How you doing this weekend? I mean, this Friday, Patsy. Good man. Um, uh, still a little, still a little upset about yesterday, but um, you know, we move on. At least we won. At least we didn't lose. You know. What would you have done differently? What? 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 What, what actually upset you? I'm gonna to use this I just want to get this live. Uh, I, I last couple times well for a while now actually i've always hated how the way that spanish teams play us and maybe they just pick us to play their anti-football <laughs> bullshit but they always like try to slow the game down and yeah. and if they are up or if their current result at the time is favorable to them they'll just like shit house it up i guess i mean i guess it's it's a tactical approach so i get it but it's just so annoying you know because um you know we want to we want to watch fucking football we don't want to see a bunch of people taking a piss on the pitch for 90 minutes because they scored a goal in the third minute or some shit so so they knew that we had to come out and score two and so they were probably playing for a draw i mean to be honest with you i missed some of the game because i was kind of doing half and half things but yeah. um but, you know, and they had some chances and we had some chances and stuff. And I think we probably deserve to win by two at least. Um, it was just one of those days, I guess, just because of the way that they were set up and they were playing. And I'm sure they would have been happy to take the draw. Um, but if they could nick they one. Seem, they, seem, they, they seem real happy with it. And then, but one thing I want to piggyback on what you said, it seems like when we play Spanish teams, they're allowed to do extra shit housing to Manchester United. I just find that weird. But uh, thank you for your little. I understand your anger. I understand your disappointment. My man Sinatra, how are you doing on this Friday? Huh? You know, it's a, it's another one. It's another day in paradise, as they say here in La La Land. And and quick thought, just on the game yesterday and Spanish teams and shithousery in general. I've, I've heard that, you know, Spanish teams and, and, you know, footy fans in Spain perceive the Premier League and England as like just a bunch of behemoth guys running around, you know, knocking into each other and a little bit of football gets played in between that. But it, it's interesting that then on the other side, when we play them, that's how they play. You know, they're just running around knocking into folks with a little bit of football played in between and you know and another thing that happened that I'm more upset about than what happened on the pitch was that we talked about it in a previous video when we when that match actually transpired and we were going on about the VAR decisions and the referee and is this going to come back and bite us in the ass later on in the group stage well guess what it did and so it, it's just it's just another example of of how Manchester United in the last couple of seasons is just, you know, we, we, we don't make our own luck in a lot of these situations. And then we get, you know, boned on the other end. And then we end up situations like this where now instead of being in the, you know, round of 16 and, you know, a little bit of, you know, time there to, to get it together after the World Cup, we're in a, you know, round of 32 double leg tie and we're definitely going to get Barcelona or Juventus. It's, it's going to be a tough match for us and we could have completely avoided that but you know shit happens well and it's, it's not like, like you want to uh, no go, go ahead. ahead go ahead Pat. you haven't said anything you haven't no, no, said no, no. i want to hear what you had to say I all right well I, was, well I was gonna say you know it's obviously not we can't lay all the blame on the refs but the two refs that we had for the sociedad games were garbage so yeah you know is that a you know premeditated tactic on any of the higher ups part or uh, is, are some palms getting greased or what? But, you know, again, we won the game, so I can't really say anything. But, you know, and it's not just us that are suffering from the shitty refs. 
it's all teams, especially in the Premier League. Yeah, they're still getting biased. That's a reps. video that uh, English wants to do. Yeah. <laughs> English wants to do. And you're right. I feel like we're, you know how Shaquille O'Neal was the most dominant big person, big NBA player? I feel like Manchester United is so, such a Goliath of a club. It's like a, it's not, it's not the referees. It's not other teams. It's not agents. It's pundits. It's everybody is like, yeah. If, whatever we do, they either magnify it or destroy it. And it's I mean, more there's, like, it's a, go ahead. No, I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, uh, okay. And I was just going to say, it just feels like it's coming from everywhere. And it's like our own players in the media. I have a lot of beef with our players, ex-players in the media. I think, they're, I think sometimes they're soft. I think sometimes they give in. Because I watch motherfucker Graham the perm soon as just say the most non-credible he's not he as, to me he has his, his credibility um i don't think he understands I think he's actually ignorant because his treatment alone of our guy martinez it's, it's going to be embarrassing for top sports to pay him to say the things he said he said he's not good on the ball he said he's going to get found out he said um he's not a good passer does he watch footy? Or do you think he's not credible? Do you think maybe he's not watching footy? Or you just think he's a straight up dickhead scouse? For I mean, me, for yeah. me, it's straight up dickhead scouse. Agreed. That he's he's a classic wind up merchant. He did. He's the, an you know, angry old fucker. He's an angry old bastard. An angry old Scott. You know, and and he's talking about oh my time in the English game, which was like forty years ago. Totally yeah. different style of play now. You know, you know, back in those days, you had to be six foot four behemoth to play center half because the whole game was just launching into the box. And, and, and you know, you had the your center forward's neck was this big because all he did was try to get the power on the headers. So it's a whole totally different game. And, and for me, um, we saw this even when we had Pogba. And a lot of times, his criticism of oh. Pogba was warranted. I'm not going to say a lot of the criticism wasn't warranted, but the handful of games that but, Paul Pogba actually played well, he would still be like, oh, you blah, 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 blah. It would always wait, be criticized. He's a you know, piss me off? This man said, who was the first to say Paul Pogba wasn't any good? And he's using that in correlation with Martinez. That's a diss. Don't you diss him like that. He's trying Wind to say up. I'm That's Nostradamus and shit. Soon as yeah. soon as is like I was right once I am God, but like yeah, you know it, dude. I you have to now think about the saying hated, adored, never ignored. I mean, oh, it's, it's even it's, it's I no matter I it's no matter too. what we can't put a foot right. Uh, as far as the pundit, I mean, there's clearly people with agendas, and then there's there's people like Sunis and Carragher that are oh. too proud to admit they're wrong. Because, you know, much like the refs, you can't admit you made a mistake. You can't. I mean, even Virgil uh, van Dyke came out and said, you can't argue with how Martinez has been playing. And of course, being taller helps you as a center back. But I think Martinez has shown that's not all it's about. Yeah, you could have good awareness. You could have a good sense of positioning when the ball's in the air, how to attack somebody. Um, you get stuck in you like actually, fucking Vidich. Yeah, you could actually have more heart than people, you know, be a little guy. Trust, I know, you know what I'm saying? How, how come we don't know how time to talk about Van Dyke? What's he doing? How's this game going? Yeah, you know, his, his season good? is, he, he's, he's getting found out this season himself. My favorite moment for Martinez for the whole season so far was that little dust up between, between him and Mason Mount where Luke Shaw yeah. was like, listen, mate, you know, yeah. this ain't the guy. Yeah. Thing. That tells you all you need to know about yeah. Martinez. He had you to push him about 30 problems, yards bro. away and be like, mate, this ain't the guy. That's hey, all you, you know, need to know. Rojo, you know, Rojo was the same way, too. A little Argentinian fire, dude. And I think Martinez is harder than him. I think Martinez look, is, is next. Is next he level. is harder because he stays in the game. <laughs> we'll you see. We'll see. With him. The ultimate test is to find out how Martinez likes his toast. If he likes it, just fucking scorched earth <laughs> like that's just, Rojo that's just from Rojo yeah Rojo's just a nutter that's that's yeah. what that's about but then again with Sunis 
um, and and guys like Carragher and think things like that. They, I think part of it is they're a little thick, right? And a little bit, they don't want to admit when they're wrong. But I also think that, you know, BT Sport and Talk Sport and Sky Sports, they pay these guys. You know, there's a reason they bring like Michael oh. Owen still on for no right, reason. Right. They they love the, the, to Stir wind the up the fans. Up. Yeah, they get yeah. The, the Twitter get the the Twitter numbers get going. The Instagram numbers are going. They're getting they're getting attention, right? And so there's they put them him out there to be the crotchety old man. Because that's what he is, and, and He's unfortunately, playing a role. yeah, and unfortunately, the 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 British sort of tabloid sports shows over there have become what ESPN has become over here, where everybody's got to be a personality, and we've gotten away from just actual sports analysis to just bullshit that you know that we see in the mainstream media anyway. We don't want to see on our sports stations, yeah, yeah. so Gosh. it's just it's a bigger I mean, problem. Cash, do you think it could be English bias? Also, because so look at the it, players they're attacking. For us, at right. least. Well, well, I know that you know the whole wish going around was that you know we could have more English players in the Premier League is like kind of what you know like some people are wanting, and 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 it should be just English players are allowed to play in the Premier League. Um, so I think they're a little they're a little. Uh, they're a little sore in the ass because we have so many there's the premier league as well as all the other leagues really are just so damn diverse. And that's one of the most beautiful things about it. And, 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 you know, these crotchety old men are paid to go, well, back in the glory days. And it's like, dude, back in the glory days, your boots yeah, were all the same. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, as soon as this day, bags. When as soon as his day being Irish was considered your foreign player, right? Like if you weren't Welsh yeah, right. or English, you, you weren't on the squad. I think I think as with any other TV show, reality TV show or talk shows, which is what that is, is you yeah. got a what you got one producer behind the scenes going like, hey, say yeah. Martinez is a little cunt. Like fuck with Martinez a little bit. Let's get some more of that. It's good for rating. I don't like, even think know, they got to tell Graham Soon is that. He probably he probably he knows the score already. He's already he's it's already so like all right, weird. It's, it's almost I, like sexual in a way he, the way he talks about Martinez because the, <laughs> the last one he had no reason to talk about. It. He was just mumbling like oh, and then, I don't even think he's good on the ball. And I was like wow, where is this coming from? He's, Martinez has been what player of the man of the match what two times? Hey, Three I'm times? gonna I'm gonna tweet Gary Neville and go hey Gary next time you're on with Sunis. Ask him how long he's been in love with Martinez. Yeah. You know, it, again, with Sudis. Ask him if it's general love. Is it really love? With, with Sudis, or is I it masturbation love? With, with, <laughs> with Sudis, it's, it's, it, we, we live in those scousers' heads. Rent free. Yeah, rent free. Is what it is. You know what I mean? And, you and know just what like, I love? What? What do you love? That there's shit again. Oh, I'm loving it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What about shit to me? Like ten, the week, I'll like be ten. like, wait a minute. <laughs> We're rebuilding and we're already better than you. <laughs> What's going on? Already twatted them. Going on? Already twatted. That wasn't even a game. That wasn't even our hardest game that we've played so far. And then I they mean, beat... It's funny how... Go ahead, Pesh. No, no. Well, I was just going to say, it's funny how they lose to... Or they beat Manchester City, but then they lose to Nottingham Forest. And it's like... Oh, yeah. Uh, like, I was just and talking about it with my... talking about it. And Nottingham yeah. Forest had... That was like their first win in like 10 matches or something crazy. <laughs> like, they hadn't won a game in forever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we cannot win with the punditry. Even even when it seems like um I don't know. What's well, another thing that's bothering with that now they're on Bruno yeah. and his comments about our youngster. And Bruno basically said, I'm gonna say it in my way, he was tripping. We 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 we, we knew he could do this, but he had to fix his attitude. He, he was tripping in the beginning because you know he was a player when they said um, he missed meetings. Remember pre um, preseason, someone missed meetings twice. It was him, and they're saying, "Oh, this person is a player missed meetings twice, but he's been dealt with." And they didn't say the name though. But Bruno said he was tripping, but now his attitude's right. And look at him play. People said that Bruno was out of bounds for bringing that up in the public. And you know, I just said it my own way, so. That's the gist of it. They said he was wrong to speak on locker room business because 
now everybody's going to have a negative opinion of um, going on in the future. Is that how you read what Bruno said, uh, Sinatra? Is, how did you? What do you think about what Bruno said? I, I don't have a problem with what he said. You know, it's he, he to me. This didn't feel like, oh, I'm Aaron. The business because a lot of times when we had these little leaks and stuff in the past it was like anonymous he, somebody asked him yeah. a direct question and he answered it and for me what i like is this is showing me that there's discipline in the team right this is showing me that ten hog said whoa 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 like you got all the talent in the world son but you know you ain't just gonna walk into this team you're gonna have to earn your way you know into playing time and I love that Garnacho did that and you know for me that's the shit that we want to see and I think in the past we lacked the discipline we lacked some of the team spirit and I think that 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 thing that those things are back and and you know I have no problem with what Bruno said I've got more problem with how we're gelling as a team when we've got some of these other players that are that are coming in because Garnacho has been one of the few that's actually like shown out because when we brought in like you know other guys that you know you may also have deserved the chance like Donnie Vanderbeek or whatever they ain't done nothing but, Bar yeah. but Garnacho has been money and and you know I, I appreciate that Ten Hag took the time to to work him into the team because I feel like in the past also we rewarded players too early with chances and maybe they didn't deserve it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so he's like, no, no, you got to deserve it. You got to earn it. So that, that's how I feel. About it. How about, well, that's how about you, Patrick? What'd you take from it? Yeah, well, uh, just to quickly add to the end of what Ryan said, that's what Ten Hag is telling him to do about players' contracts too. He's like, nobody gets, nobody gets guaranteed shit. They got to, they got to earn the <laughs> shit. Yeah, you know? yeah. He's like, that's going to be my bad. decision, not yours. So, so I can totally see how that's that's his that's his mindset for sure with Garnacho and and anybody else really. I mean, man benched Ronaldo, dropped him for a big fucking game. The man's yeah. got no allegiances, and that's, I mean, he he, uh, he has an allegiance obviously to the squad, but you know he's not picking favorites. So, yeah. so I appreciate that about him. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I believe it, this is playing into what the gaffer wants, though. Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, ahead. yeah. I, no, I agree. I agree. I mean, I, 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 I don't have a problem with what he said about uh, Garnacho. You know, like especially not to say that Garnacho was destined down the same path, but especially what you know what happened with Greenwood is like you had a young kid who was coming through the right. ranks. He was fucking doing his thing he was getting started yeah. man was man was a star boy he was gonna he was gonna be mm -hmm. a consistent player for england he was gonna be mm -hmm. a consistent starter for united we wouldn't have even needed anthony um and and you know man had the had the world in his the palm of his hand and but who really knows what happened or what caused him to do what he did but the thing is is like you know these kids need to be protected and when you got somebody like garnacho who's clearly you know, in my opinion, a future star, if he keeps keeps his head right. I mean, man could be the next Ronaldo. We don't know. I mean, he grew up idolizing mm -hmm. Ronaldo. You can you can tell it that he emulates some of his play and he's about the trickery and the shithousery and stuff. So I think sometimes like you kind of need a harder smack. And I think Bruno kind of airing a little bit of the dirty. I don't think he went into like it's not even detail. Airing, it's not even airing something that happened months ago. Right, they took care of it already. This yeah. is not this is the old news. Bruno yeah. didn't say it, it happened yesterday, and we took care of it. Bruno, this is something we knew it happened in some in some in preseason. Yeah, and Bruno I'm, kept it one hundred. And you know I'm what? Thinking, we would have figured it out. We would have figured it out eventually, right? Yeah. We we, we, we could have yeah. narrowed it down and said, okay, who wasn't playing? You know, we we could have figured that one out. And you got to uh, ask yourself too, like if you were in that position that Garnacho was in. You were having a stinker for a couple months or something like that. You got your head right. And then six months later, you're fucking riding high. And, you know, a couple months later from that, your teammate goes, yeah, he had a shitty attitude, but he, but look at him now. I'd be like, cool. Yeah, I did have a shitty attitude, but, you know, yeah. and I, I think he'll be proud of himself that he proved to himself that he can do it. I mean, you know, he's surrounded by professionals and stuff like that. Um, and, and so I think he's, I think he's going to be fine. And I don't, 
have a problem with what Bruno said because, you know, at the end of the day, Bruno's not the type to gossip about shit. Like he's saying no. it because it was real and he was saying it because he was, you know, probably proud of Garnacho for, you know, getting his shit together and fixing his attitude or whatever the situation was, you know. I have another point. I think this goes in the show. I have just another quick point on Garnacho and punditry. I don't know if anybody else watched like the CBS sports coverage, like for the Europa League, but they were in the studio on about Garnacho. And I didn't know who any of these pundits are. So don't expect me to know names or be able to back it up. I know that Lasting girl is. Yeah. Or, I know who that I, yellow I actually, girl is. I don't even know if she was on the United supported too. She brings I don't even know if she was on this. I don't even know if she was on this particular broadcast. But anyway, they were talking oh, she was about with those guys. And they were okay, like, go ahead, what they say? So they were like, oh, you know, um, ever since Garnacho's been called into the Argentine national team, you know, he's he's downplayed all that. Ronaldo's the best player. Ronaldo's my favorite player. Ronaldo's my idol stuff. You know, they're not going to have that in the Argentine team. And I'm like. Have you been on man's Instagram? Have you been on man's Instagram? Do you know what this, this is all comes Ronaldo from? all the time. Yeah. They're just going to live with that they, shit, you know? They, they, no, we ain't they, sucking Messi's dick over here, dog. We ain't sucking that. Uh-uh. We ain't doing that. I think what I'm getting from everything, Donato has character. He's building character. And at 18, that is fantastic because I remember in the preseason, we were like, why isn't he not playing? But we didn't figure it out. Now we so know. Now that Bruno was airing dirty laundry, it would have came out then. Man, he could have been shows... in preseason going, Garnacho's fucking around, man, what's wrong with this yeah. fool? Didn't do yeah. it. Yeah. It yeah. didn't leak. It didn't even leak. And then there's it's no like... Dean Henderson. Dean Henderson could have, if Dean Henderson was back there playing keeper, he'd been like, oh, Garnacho's fucking around. Okay, Dean Henderson, how did you feel about him flipping out the Scousers? Did you, did you go, all right, Dean? I saw that. Is he still in the doghouse? Yeah. No, that's great. No. no, I mean, he gets, he, gets, he gets definite points for that, especially because yeah. he probably Maybe. got fined for it. Well, he's always a Manny yeah, lad, yeah. right? He's a Manny lad forever, so, you know, that's never going to go gonna away. He's going to have to call up the gaffer and have a phone call with it and, and be like, listen, I was just hurt. I feel well, we're, we're well, I, I never got yeah. to meet you. <laughs> well, we're looking at goalkeepers, so I can't imagine Hendo coming back. I, I think if he gets a new contract for me, you got to give it. Look at the season he's having. Look at the, I, the shot stopping he's having. I know that's another video for another time, but it's the hey, uh, hey uh, How many clean sheets we got? How many clean sheets we got in a row? Uh, well, we didn't, get one, we didn't get one yeah. against Chelsea. Oh. We didn't get one against Chelsea, no. but we got one against West Ham. We got one against Sociedad. We got one against uh, there another Sheriff, Europe right? Newcastle, right? Newcastle. Newcastle and Sheriff. But we drew against Newcastle. That was before Chelsea, though, I think. But we, we conceded one But that was, one that was against... another game that we dominated, even though it was a draw. Yeah, we, we conceded one against Chelsea. But um, um, I'm going to find out right now. What do you think now. about Victor, Victor Lindelof being maybe our third center back in the rotation over at McGuire? I mean, this. Yes, <laughs> yes. But you know what? Let's let's rewind something. I actually was happy with Harry's play. The way he started. You know, he he he's he's looked better <clears throat> in the last couple of appearances that he's had, but still, for me, he's he's still not up to scruff for for United, no. and and I still feel like we don't have a deep team at all, and it's still nervy. With especially now that we're playing Villa, we haven't even gotten into that yet. Um, and we're playing them twice, and I hate playing teams back to back because even if you win one game, it, it, it's hard to beat. And you know this better than anybody playing, you know, Division One sports. It's hard to beat somebody back to back. It just it is it's very hard. It's hard to beat someone it's twice. Very hard. And so we got them in the League Cup on Thursday, also. And so it's like. You know, do we have the the squad that can win both of those games? You know, because they're both must wins. We we beat Villa. We we're looking good to get into the top four, especially because we have a game in hand on Newcastle. Um, but then, you know, do you want to go further in the League Cup? Do we give a shit about the League Cup? You know. And um, Ten Hag, Ten Hag has said he wants to win every game 
and play this, well, you know, the best team in every game, which we, you know, we expect managers to say that anyway, but that wasn't the best team that against Real Sociedad. So what, you know, what do we expect? It wasn't a bad one, though. It wasn't a bad one. I think one thing he, Tin Hog always says, I'm going to play the best team possible. And you got to look what he looks at. And he's like, okay, he's hurt. He's got a knock. Let's bring him in. I trust him. Uh, I kind of, you know, he's, he's weird with his choices because Gernacho threw me off. Yeah, that totally threw me the fuck off when I saw him playing. I was like, oh shit, this is real. Well, as bad as um, Sanchez has actually, been playing, does, does Garnacho keep his place? Well, Patch, how do you feel about Sancho? He's so sick a lot. He's uh, starting to get sick a lot. Yeah. It's, I mean, uh, do you think he's losing momentum? He's losing positioning in the rotation. Well, I think his confidence is probably shot. I mean, he knows he hasn't been playing that well, but he's I mean, he hasn't been terrible this season, but he's just been, he on been a, terrible. But he's just been on a little slump so far. And it happens to everyone. But, you know, at the at the beginning of the season, you know, Malassia came out of the block swinging and now he's benched for Shaw. And so, wow. you know what I mean? So he is bench mob, huh? So yeah. You know, so it's just about who's playing better. And so obviously maybe Sancho's either not showing something to Ten Hag in training or it's, you know, Erickson or Bruno or Rashford or whoever else. It just comes down to the, them just being in better form at the moment. But, um, you know, San Sancho's not a lost cause. I'm still happy we have him. He still has that ability. And, you know, who knows? He may make a resurgence, you know, after the World Cup because he's going to get a month of rest. And then be like, all right, let's fucking have it. And he might be playing a lot of games because I'm sure some of our boys are going to be fucking. Yeah, active. someone's going to come back tired, nicked up. Something we, you know, us. Somebody's going to come. Someone from France. <laughs> oh, that's Verona. Yeah. Shit, he's not playing either. Though he's not playing in the World Cup, is he? Uh, it's I TBD. Don't know. It's TBD. I don't know. Um, I want to go on one more topic, but I'm going to ask you guys a quick question before I go to the last topic. If you had one choice one person to pick one position to pick in january what would it be go ahead patch uh striker one pick i'd striker. say striker yeah i think i think i mean we're defending really well our midfield looks all right uh, you know we just can't finish we could have had we could have beat chelsea we could have beat all these other teams by more goals because we had plenty of opportunities in just about all the games but we just couldn't finish sinatra you got one pick in yeah, january I mean that that's the obvious pick striker i mean we're not we're not scoring enough goals we're creating a plethora of chances Plenty. that we're just yeah. not finishing off i mean I, and i hate to say it because they're birdie bastard you know not very good words but if we had a guy like erling Haaland, he'd be top of the fucking league right now and so we got to have there's there's more smush faces out there that can put the ball in the back of the net you know and and we got to find him and yeah. he's out there somewhere. The The concern is, will the Glazers fuck Ten Hog in the ass like they fuck everybody in the ass? Okay, and we're going to jump to that. This, this is what and I'm I would have said Striker, too. I was going to say Striker, too. And all the guys, that shows how smart the guys are 18 and they casual. But not all the kids. Now, since Sinatra fucking... <laughs> just joking. The Glazers. Fucking our coach. But I think their focus is bad because they're focused on the damn anti-Glazer movement. How do you go insist at a away game in Spain, a real sense of that, away fans cannot bring green and gold, anything, any because they have labeled that anti-Glazer. Because the stewardess who was not, he just- Yeah, she knew what that is. She, she knew what the fuck that was. She knew because they told her. And you know what, I don't want to hear the club's little, no, no, you know, no, they, no, they no, released the a statement said saying, oh, we wouldn't tell the away fans what they could bring or be. Bullshit. You told them if it's green and gold, we don't want to see it on television because they're getting embarrassed because they're getting exposed. And I love it. You know yeah. what? Everybody that's watching this, especially if you're ever then you go to away days, you better tuck that in your crotch. The next time you better get that in the stadium. It's fuck that, bro. And then taking the uh, supporter, the disabled supporters section flags, the, the Glazers are on one beyond, you know, just money and fuckery. No, Glazers out. It's disgusting. It, yeah. it seems, Pat, it seems like their focus is bad. I mean, they should be looking at this brilliant gaffer that they had luck. They fell into our lap. I'm going to say fell into our lap. 
Yeah, no, and they're back him. Yeah, they're 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 scared. They've been scared for a while. I mean, this is I think this is the most traction the Glazers out movement has gotten, and it's fucking magnificent. So we just yeah, like guys Sinatra keep going, said, anybody who's watching right now, if your Glazers out and you're in England, we'd obviously be there if we could, but we're all broke right now. Uh, get on that shit, Glazers out. Uh, I mean, like I said, they're they're shit in their pants. They're they're concerned. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just from last season, that big protest before the Liverpool game that got the game postponed. I mean, the the amount of fucking people that were at that with green and gold flags and flares and yeah. breaking onto the pitch saying "fuck you, Glazers." Shout out to all you thing. Shout out to all you all you guys. It was a beautiful thing. Um, but and yeah, there's money. The money's there to get him out. If we could just get it done, right? The money's there. I mean, how could the money not be there? I mean, this club is a behemoth moneymaker, but it, we know why it's not there. It's going to someone else's pockets. I mean, if they, if they, I don't even think they watch our matches to tell you the truth, because if they watch, they would say something like, oh my goodness, you know, uh, we might have to get a different strike. Poor, poor Cristiano. I mean, and Martial, oh, he's playing this weekend, right? Is Martial playing? Uh, is Villa? We'll we'll see. He's he's back in training, but I don't we need think him to play. Ready. We yeah. need him to play this weekend. Yeah, we got a minute um, and a half we... left. Oh, do we? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's been great. Uh, any any parting words? Any parting words? Let's go, Pat. Hit me with a parting word. What do you have? What do you give me a score for Villa? Let's let's keep the let's keep the clean sheet streak going. We're three clean sheets in a row right now. Let's keep it going. I think we can do. I think we can do Villa two or three nil, maybe three one. That's what I reckon. Sinatra. I think three it's another. Tight. I would wow. love. I would love that. But for me, it's gonna be another tight one. It's gonna be another one nil. If it was Steven Gerrard still managing Villa, I, I think we would take them to the Woodhouse. But I think now that they got a new manager, they're a little bit on the upswing and I, I feel like we're probably not going to finish all of our chances off. So one nil for me. All right. I'm going to go with the two nil because Marshall's going to come back and Vernacho is going to be somewhere around there. And we're going to, we have probably Rashford. Right, I think we're going to come at him. They're going to catch him off guard. Uh, Una, whatever his name is going to try and do his thing. And I don't think he can organize his team that quick. And we're going to be coming at him. I'm going to go with a two zero. This is Casey from 1878 Casuals, brought to you by Terrascope, Moo Moo Mia Ice Cream. Remember to like and subscribe, comment. We want to get your opinions. Share, too. Share this. And We're getting close to 1,000. Fuck the so Glazers. Please. Tell your friends, the tell your family. Up fuck the them. Reds, and don't stop fuck the, the green and gold movement. You gentlemen, have a great Friday evening. I'm about to go get Liddy. Peace. 1878. Shout out to everybody. Come on. The whole crew.